One Tony Award, one Oscar nomination, one classic Disney movie. Amanda buys the troubles keep piling up, ordering to psychiatric testing after starting a fire in a neighbor's driveway. Actress Lisa Loring has died. She was the first to play Wednesday Adams in the 60s sitcom The Adams Family. It is no news that most Hollywood child stars often end up having a disturbed upbringing due to their early exposure to the spotlight. These child stars apparently had the life every young kid longed for fame, fans, and fortune, but their family's inability to help them handle it has caused a fault in their star. We have traced down some hidden details about your favorite Hollywood child stars who had some of the most tragic lifestyles while growing up and to date. Join me as we discover the tragic life stories and experiences of the best gifts to the Hollywood industry. 8. Jack Wilde Jack was one of the rising Hollywood child stars of the 60s. Stardom for Jack came quite early. While older actors were investing so much into acting and vying to get a space in the Oscars, Jack already bagged an Academy Award nomination for Best Supporting Actor at the age of 16 making him the fourth youngest nominee in the category. Not only did he achieve that feat, but he also received the BAFTA Award and Golden Globe nominations. Jack was born on September 30, 1952, in Royton, Lancashire, England, into a middle-class family with his older brother Arthur. Jack's family struggled to make ends meet, and to go through life, Jack and his brother Arthur would work odd jobs. When Jack clocked eight years, he moved with his family to Hounslow in Middlesex, seeking a greener pasture. Jack worked with a milkman who paid him about five shillings at Middlesex. Although Jack had no formal training as an actor, he was incredible. While playing football with his friend and brother in the park, his agent, June Collins, discovered his talents and enrolled him alongside Arthur Collins at the Barbara Speak Stage School in West London. This was the first step towards Jack's breakthrough as an actor. After featuring in television series such as H.R. Puffin Stuff and his portrayal in films like Melody and Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, Jack received several accolades and nominations, such as the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor at the 41st Academy Awards, the Golden Globe Award for Most Promising Newcomer at the 26th Golden Globe Awards, and the BAFTA Award for Most Promising Newcomer at the 22nd British Academy Film Awards. At the age of 21, Wilde was a flat-out drunk. His alcoholism caused him severe health conditions, leading to three cardiac arrests and numerous hospital stays. By the 14th of March, Jack was diagnosed with diabetes. As if this were not enough tragedy for the self-made drunk and alcoholic, his addiction to drugs and alcohol ruined his career and cost him his marriage with his first love, actress Gaynor Jones, in 1985. Several reports showed that during the mid-1980s, Jack's drinking spree had graduated to him taking four bottles of vodka a week. That is, he typically drank half a bottle of vodka and two bottles of wine every day. At some point in his life, Jack admitted that he was drunk and couldn't help himself. He joined a group for addicts and alcoholics to find help, and well, this worked for a while. For the first time in a long while, Jack stopped drinking for six weeks. While one would think this was the end of drinking for Jack, the habit of drinking was already ingrained in him. After talking about his six weeks of sobriety, he bought a bottle of champagne to celebrate. Eventually, by 1989, Jack had finally become sober, but the consequences of his actions were waiting. Sadly, the superstar was diagnosed with oral cancer in 2001. After the diagnosis, Wilde underwent a series of chemotherapy treatments but the case was far more serious than it looked on the surface. He then underwent surgery and had his tongue and vocal cords cut, making him unable to speak for the last two years of his life. Five years after being diagnosed with oral cancer, Jack Wilde died on the first day of March in 2006 at the age of 53. Jack, who was most popular for his role as artful Dodger in the film Oliver, had one of the most promising futures in Hollywood considering his incredible talent and impeccable acting excellence. But with his own hands, Jack ruined his future. 7. David Cassidy David Cassidy, born on April 12, 1950, was the son of famous actor and singer Jack Cassidy and actress Evelyn Ward. David is best known for his role as Keith Partridge, the son of Shirley Partridge, his real-life stepmom in the 1970s musical sitcom The Partridge Family. David had a rich history, 
and a genuine love for music as a kid, and he often pursued fame in that area of his life. He, however, got into acting through the influence of his father, Jack, who set him up with his first manager at 19 years old. In 1969, Jack introduced David Cassidy to Ruth Ahrens, an ally and former table tennis champion who later became a talent manager. Much of David's on-screen success can be attributed to Ruth Ahrens, as she became one of the biggest figures in his life and a close friend who was invested in his success as an actor. David Cassidy didn't have the best childhood with his parents. Because of the tight schedule and choice of life of his parents, who were always on tour, David spent most of his early years with his maternal grandparents. In 1956, David learned from the children in the neighborhood that his parents had been separated for over two years and hadn't told him. Ripples of this incident continued in David's life, considering how he couldn't sustain a healthy marriage for so long. David, on the other hand, flourished with music, which made most of his acting in musical sitcoms. His role in the Partridge family set the tone for his solo musical career. David's musical career was quite successful until he met a turning point in 1974. In one of Cassidy's live concerts, there was a report of a stampede in London's White City Stadium during his world tour on May 26, 1974, when over 700 people were brutally injured. David's success gradually took a switch from acting to music, making several hits back-to-back, -back, topping charts, and winning the hearts of fans from the 60s into the 21st century. However, while David's musical career was nothing short of great, he suffered a lot of marital and family crises that, in his words, made him feel empty. In 1977, David Cassidy first got married to Kay Lenz, an actress, and they got divorced on December 28, 1983. Then, he married his second wife, Meryl Tans, in 1984. Their marriage was short-lived as well, and then he finally got married to his third wife, Sue Schifrin, a songwriter, in 1991. In August 2014, reports showed that Cassidy and Sue had separated, with Schifrin filing for divorce in February 2014. In 2017, Cassidy started showing symptoms of sickness. A significant one was when he collapsed on stage. During his performance in Agoura Hills, California, David experienced difficulty recalling the lyrics of songs he had performed for over 50 years and then appeared to fall off the stage. For one, Cassidy thought he had dementia and announced that he was retiring from all further performances. Later that same year, Cassidy broke down during a studio session and was immediately hospitalized. After his hospitalization, Cassidy got on a phone call with a producer, stating that he had just been diagnosed with liver disease. Cassidy added that he didn't have any sign of dementia at that stage of his life, but what he experienced was complete alcohol poisoning and that he lied about his drinking. So apparently, Cassidy was addicted to drinking and had been arrested several times for driving under the influence and even jailed at some point. Cassidy, who was now enveloped in sadness and pain over his situation, said, You know, I did it to myself, man. I did it to myself to cover up the sadness and the emptiness. On November 18, 2017, Cassidy was hospitalized again with liver and kidney failure. He was in very critical condition and was medically induced into a coma. Two days later, he came out of a coma, although still in critical condition, and was quite stable this time. All hopes were high, and the doctors put in their best efforts to keep Cassidy alive until a liver was available for a transplant. Sadly, Cassidy could hold up for too long. He eventually died of liver failure on November 21, 2017, two days after he was hospitalized at the age of 67. Cassidy's final words were, So much wasted time. 6. Matthew Garber Matthew Garber was a fast-rising star among the Hollywood child prodigies of the early 1980s. As a son of the Queen's Land, Britain, Matthew was most notable for his role as Michael Banks in the 1964 award-winning film Mary Poppins. Matthew was born to the family of Leonard Garber in Stepney, London in 1956. Both his parents were stage performers. Indeed, an apple doesn't fall far from the tree. The acting child prodigy has taken his excellence in acting from his parents. Matthew's career in acting started when the father of his childhood friend, Karen Dautris, observed his comical and funny attitudes like screwing up his nose, brushing his hair back with one hand, squinting, 
and his artful dodges, which deemed him fit for roles in the Disney Film Corporation. Using his influence as a Shakespearean actor, Roy Dottris, Karen's father, helped Matthew get on the screen. At the age of seven, Matthew made his screen debut in Disney's The Three Lives of Thomasina. That same year, Matthew and his screen partner and Thomasina co-star were hired to play Jane and Michael in Mary Poppins. Mary Poppins won five Academy Awards and made her child stars world famous. Again, Matthew and Karen Doris bonded for the last time ten years before his death to display their natural talent in the movie The Gnome Mobile. The two superstars acted as the children of a rich lumber mogul who came across a gnome forest and were needed to help the gnomes from dying off. Hurtfully, no one expected such a promising TV enigma to have a short life. In 1976, Matthew contracted the deadly disease hepatitis during his stay in India. By the time his father brought him back to London for treatment, the disease had already spread to his pancreas. After one year of excruciating pain, precisely on June 13, 1977, Matthew died of hemorrhagic necrotizing pancreatitis at the young age of 21. His body was later cremated at St. Marylebone Crematorium, London. Although Matthew's life was short, he made sure to live a full life, radiating happiness. 5. Shirley Temple Shirley Temple was one of the best actresses America has produced. Shirley was born into an average family of bank employee George Temple and homemaker Gertrude Temple on April 23, 1928. Aside from being an actress, Shirley was a successful dancer, diplomat, and singer. Shirley, Hollywood's number one box office draw from 1934 to 1938, was a young girl filled with amazing talents since she was a kid. Shirley's mother, by the way, was one of the key persons who played a major role in shaping Shirley's trajectory as one of the best gifts to Hollywood. After observing her singing, dancing, and acting talents, Temple's mother encouraged her to build them. As a way of being a support system, Shirley's mother enrolled her in a dance school that stands as the maiden incubator of her greatness. Shirley Temple began her acting career in 1931 at the age of three and was popularly known for her performance in Bright Eyes, released in 1934. While Shirley was at the dance school, she was spotted by Charles Lamont, a casting director for educational pictures. Lamont liked Shirley's aura and invited her to audition for a role in his upcoming comedy short, Baby Burlesques. Fortunately, Shirley performed excellently and won the role. This was the first step in her career in front of the camera. After signing the contract with Educational Pictures, Temple appeared in other TV shows in 1933, such as Glad Rags to Riches, a parody of the Mae West feature She Done Him Wrong, this time as a saloon singer. By the time Shirley clocked seven years, she had already earned a special Juvenile Academy Award in 1935 for her fine performance and contribution as a juvenile performer in motion pictures. Subsequently, Shirley continued to appear in several films as she grew. Fast forward to 1949, when Shirley Temple shot her last film and trod another path entirely. She didn't show up in films or shows until 1958. She resumed show business in 1958 with a two-season television anthology series of fairy tale adaptations called Shirley Temple's Storybook. By this time, Shirley Temple was partially into acting and was more into diplomacy and the business of acting. Shirley became board director at famous corporations like the Walt Disney Company, Del Monte Foods, and the National Wildlife Federation. And then, in 1969, she began her diplomatic career when she was appointed U.S. Ambassador to Ghana and later to Czechoslovakia in 1988. The rise to stardom, like it is for every other TV star, came with many issues, myths, and rumors. The biggest of these was that Shirley Temple always had a wig on because of how her hair was styled. At some point in time, fans would yank her hair to see if she had a wig on, as well. In 1972, when Shirley clocked 44, there were rumors of Shirley having breast cancer. This rumor took the rounds until there was a public pronouncement that Temple had developed breast cancer. Eventually, America's sweetheart, Shirley Temple, died in Woodside, California, at age 85 on February 10, 2014. The cause of her death was later found to be chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD. It turns out Shirley was a longtime smoker, but didn't show it publicly to not lose her fans. 
Shirley Temple is buried at Alta Mesa Memorial Park, California. 4. Amanda Bynes Amanda Laura Bynes is an American actress born April 3, 1986. Amanda started her acting career as a child actress, with her face appearing on the Nickelodeon sketch comedy series, All That, between the years of 1996 to 2000 and The Amanda Show in 1992. She started professional acting at age seven, taking up modeling roles in television advertisements. Amanda Bynes is best known for her portrayal in the popular sitcom What I Like About You from 2002 to 2006, after which she made her film debut in the comedic movie Big Fat Liar in 2002. After her role in Big Fat Liar, Amanda went on to showcase her talent in several films that made history in Hollywood, some of which include What a Girl Wants, Robots, She's the Man, Hairspray and Easy A, Annie, The Secret Garden, The Music Man, and the forever classic The Sound of Music. As much as Amanda Bynes brought the heat to acting, she also had a flair for illustration and fashion design. Her love for these niches prompted her to enroll in a four-year course in merchandise product development at the Fashion Institute of Design and Merchandising, FIDM, in Irvine, California, in 2014. In 2019, Amanda graduated with an Associate of Art degree and made public announcements about getting a bachelor's degree. However, way before Amanda enrolled at the Fashion Institute of Design and Merchandising, she started showing traits of mental breakdown and substance abuse. In 2012, Bynes was arrested and charged with driving under the influence, which led to a three-year probation. Subsequently, in 2013, Amanda Bynes was caught in possession of hard drugs. She was charged with reckless endangerment and marijuana possession after she was found smoking in her apartment in Manhattan. The same year, Amanda Bynes was detained after allegedly starting a small fire in the driveway of a stranger in her hometown, Thousand Oaks. After her release, Amanda was placed under a mandatory 72-hour mental health evaluation hold. In an attempt to help her get past her challenges, Bynes' parents filed for conservatorship a few moments after her compulsory hospitalization. In October 2014, Bynes' case had worsened, and she announced that she had been diagnosed with bipolar disorder. For four years, Amanda was under conservatorship, and she eventually affirmed publicly in 2018 that she had been sober for four years, thanks to her parents. In an interview, Amanda disclosed that among the substances she abused most were cocaine, MDMA, and her ADHD prescription, Adderall. For one, Amanda Bynes had gotten over her addiction and substance abuse until 2023, when she was again placed on a 72-hour psychiatric hold after she called for help following a psychotic episode in Los Angeles. Quick medical attention was given to her, but it didn't seem to be the end. On June 17, 2023, Amanda called for police help, making claims that she had strange thoughts of self-harm. Mental health professionals have determined that she is in need of inpatient treatment. After 13 days, Amanda left the facility with plans for follow-up outpatient treatment. This is the latest about Amanda Bynes, a Hollywood star who rewrote her blossoming career story into a tragic one about substance abuse 3. Lisa Loring Lisa Loring was famous for her role as Wednesday Addams in the American sitcom The Addams Family, which aired from 1964 to 1966. Lisa was born to her parents, Judith Ann and James P. DeCinces, in 1958 in Kwajalein Atoll, Marshall Islands. Both of Lisa's parents served as members of the U.S. Navy. Lisa didn't have the best of parenthood while growing up. Her father and mother divorced shortly after her birth, and she was forced to live with a single mother, first in Hawaii and then in Los Angeles. Lisa faced the tragedy of her mother's death in 1974 losing her to the cold hand of death through a life of alcoholism. However, life on the screen started at an early age for Lisa. Lisa started as a model at the age of three, with her first appearance in an episode of the series Dr. Kildare, which aired in 1964. After her portrayal in this series, Lisa has appeared in a series of sitcoms and series, including The Pruitts of Southampton, the CBS soap opera As the World Turns, and the slasher films Blood Frenzy, Iced, and Savage Harbor. Maybe because of the worries about her parents' failed marriage, Lisa found it hard to have a successful marriage until she died. In 1973, 
She had her first marriage with a man named Farrell Foamberg. The marriage ended after a year. Then Loring married her second husband, Doug Stevenson, in 1981. Stevenson was an actor and contract performer for the CBS soap opera Search for Tomorrow. Their marriage lasted only two years with Loring's second child. After four years, Lisa got married to Jerry Butler, a chronic pornographer. At first, Lisa was unaware of this part of Jerry's clandestine identity, but as soon as she did, she expressed her dissatisfaction and discomfort with his career in producing adult films. Jerry couldn't help it, eventually leading to the couple's divorce in 1992. For several, almost a decade, Lisa decided to be celibate until her encounter with Graham Rich. Lisa then got married to Graham for the fourth time in 2003. Their marriage lasted a few years, although they lived apart for six years and divorced in 2014. Lisa Loring, a promising Hollywood star, has survived tragedies since she was a kid, but still lives happily. On January 28, 2023, the 64-year-old actress died of a stroke caused by hypertension at Providence St. Joseph Medical Center, Burbank, California, in the hands of her two daughters. 2. Judith Barcy Judith Ava Barcy has one of the most tragic stories in the history of Hollywood child prodigies. Judith, who was on her way to becoming a Hollywood child star, met an abrupt end. Her case was one that portrayed betrayal from those we expected the most love and protection from. Judith Barcy was born on June 6, 1978. She began her journey into superstardom as a child, starring in television series and appearing in commercials. One of her most renowned moments in television history was her voiceover as Ducky in the cartoons The Land Before Time and Annie Marie in All Dogs Go to Heaven. Judith's impeccable talent as a kid opened doors for her in so many ways and in such a short time that older actors struggled to attain even after so many years in the industry. By the time Judith was in fourth grade, she had started earning $100,000 per year, equivalent to $247,000, as of 2022. With her earnings, Judith Barcy purchased a three-bedroom apartment for her parents in Los Angeles. As Judith Barcy's career continued to soar, her father evolved into a different kind of person. Joseph became an alcoholic who was very toxic and would often make threatening moves to kill himself, his wife, and his daughter. His habitual drinking lifestyle got him arrested three times for drunk driving. The case of Josef verbally abusing Judith and physically abusing his wife, Maria, went on an upsurge after Maria reported him to the police. Josef would routinely threaten to cut Maria and Judith in the throat and burn down the house. The physical violence from Josef Barsi continued, with Judith telling one of her friends about her nosebleed in the aftermath of her father throwing pans and pots at her. The abuse from Josef was not going down well with Judith at all. Judith began to gain weight and also developed compulsive disorders like plucking out her eyelashes and trichotillomania, pulling out her hair. In 1998, Judith broke down in front of her agent, Ruth Hansen. Ruth quickly took her to a child psychologist who identified intense physical and emotional abuse. After finding out about Judith's case, the child psychologist reported the incident to the Child Protective Services for further investigation. Maria did not allow the investigation to go on for long after she assured the caseworker that she intended to begin divorce proceedings against Josef and that she would move out to a Panorama City apartment with her daughter, Judith. Sadly, Maria didn't follow through with this plan because she feared losing her marriage and property. If only she had followed through on what she told the caseworker, Judith would not have died. On July 28th, there was a report about the deaths of three people by the Los Angeles Times. Josef had committed a murder-suicide. At the age of 10, Judith was shot in the head by her father, and her mother was shot by Josef, too, after which he cremated them and then killed himself. Judith Barcy, the Hollywood child prodigy, and her mother were buried in Forest Lawn Memorial Park. 1. Leif Garrett Life Garrett was born Leif Per Nervik on November 8, 1961, who started his acting career at five. Leif is an American actor, singer, and media personality who gained entry into the acting space in the early 70s, although he has gained more popularity as a substance abuser and for his legal troubles. Leif grew up mostly without a paternal touch, 
which seemed to have affected his outlook as a young man. Leif was not the only one who enjoyed acting in the family. He made magic with his sister, Dawn Lynn. They both worked several acting jobs, the most famous being their roles in the horror movie Devil Times 5. The duo portrayed juvenile mental patients who almost unintentionally went on a killing spree at an isolated ski resort. They also appeared as guest actors in Gunsmoke and the DC classic Wonder Woman series. Garrett's acting career was on an upward spiral as he participated in several more films, with his role as Jimi Henderson in Bob and Carol and Ted and Alice bringing him to the limelight in 1969. Garrett's acting excellence also spanned into other movies, such as Walking Tall, where he acted as Mike Pusser, and his recurring role as Zach Russell on the ABC TV series Family. Garrett had a rich background in music and felt it was a side of his that he had not explored enough. In late 1976, Garrett made a transition into music and signed a five-album recording contract with Atlantic Records. After signing off the contract, Garrett released his debut single, Come Back When You Grow Up, and then proceeded to record his first album, Leaf Garrett. Since then, Garrett has continued to release several hit singles that made it to the chart and albums that were his fans' favorites at the time. He has also gone on a number of tours across the Asian and European continents. However, Garrett has a drug addiction problem. Garrett started taking cocaine when he was 14. Five days before his 18th birthday, Garrett crashed his mom's Porsche 914 on his way to buy it after a midnight party that got him high on cocaine. Garrett wasn't the only party to the accident. His one-month-old friend, Roland Winkler, was with him. Winkler got the most hits from the accident when he developed paraplegia and sued Garrett in 1984. The court ruled and ordered Garrett to pay Winkler $3.9 million for damages. This was just the first of his stories as a drug abuser. Moving on to 1999, Garrett was arrested by the LA police while trying to buy heroin and cocaine. He was arrested again in 2004 for the possession of cocaine and again in January 2014 for the possession of heroin. This time around, Garrett was arrested without bail and was only granted release after 90 days in jail. In 2010, Garrett was arrested again for the possession of narcotics. He was charged but denied having any drugs in his possession until he finally admitted that he had black tar heroin in his shoe. Sadly, by October 2010, the court had remanded him and ordered him to enter a court-ordered rehabilitation program. Thanks for watching. To enjoy more thrilling stories that uncover the reality of your favorites, click now on the next video that pops up on your screen.